Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Yesterday my husband stopped at the farmer's market and just happened to get there right at the right moment while one of the vendors was setting up and they were having a special deal for the day, $10 bushels of local peaches. So he snagged three bushels of peaches and today's video isn't what I was planning but when you get really good deals on in-season local fruit that's absolutely delicious, well then you alter course and you have a day of preserving. So today's video is going to be all about preserving these peaches. The first thing I'm gonna do with these peaches is to start canning them, and I will be doing three different canning recipes today, and all of them can be found in this book, The Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, and I'll link that down below if you're interested. For all of our recipes that we're working on today, these peaches need to be peeled and pitted. So we're just gonna drop the peaches a few at a time into boiling water. You leave them in there for about 30 seconds and then pull them out and run them under cold water. And then the peels should come off pretty easily at that point. You just want to be careful because they are pretty hot after boiling but as you can see I'm just kind of peeling the skins off. Now Ethan was helping me with this process at the beginning um, so that we could get this done faster and we tried to cut the peach off of the pit but these are not freestone pits so it just ended up working a lot easier to kind of rip the peach off of the pit and that's what we ended up doing uh, i will have to say though be very careful of the peach pits i didn't realize it till the end of the day but those little peach pits actually were like slicing open my fingers so they are pretty sharp Now, all of the recipes called for the peaches to be chopped, and I thought I was being really brilliant by putting it in my food processor. I found out afterward that it is actually not considered safe practice or best practice to chop anything in the food processor that you're going to be canning. So word to the wise, if you want to do things by the book, um, don't be using the food processor. I did use the food processor all day long to chop pretty much everything for these recipes and I'm not too worried about it, but in the future, I'll probably just stick to hand chopping. The first recipe that we're gonna work on today is peach barbecue sauce, which I had not ever tried. My friend Kelsey over at Seed and Sparrow Homestead said that they like to use the peach barbecue sauce a lot and I thought that sounded really good, especially because one of our favorite things to do with barbecue sauce is to put chicken in a crock pot and cover it in barbecue sauce. And I thought that peach barbecue sauce would go really nicely on chicken. So we'll have to see. I'm gonna try it out and let you know how it is. But after I made this first batch and tasted it, I ended up making another two batches of the barbecue sauce cause I figured we would probably use a lot of it. It was really good. It's also a little bit spicy. So I'm pretty sure that you could just cut back on the amount of pepper flakes that you put in if you don't like it to be that spicy.
So after my husband brought home all of these peaches, I quick found all of the recipes that we wanted to make with them and then wrote down all of the ingredients I needed that we didn't have. And we actually went back to the farmer's market and were able to find good deals on everything. So we were able to get um, the bell peppers, onions. Um, for one of my recipes, I needed jalapenos. And it just worked out really well that we found all of the items we needed. If this was a little bit later in the season, I would have had all the peppers and onions myself. It just was a little bit too early for that to be coming out of my garden. And as always, I'll put in the description box below which book that this is found in and what page. That way, if you're interested in making this yourself, you are able to find that recipe. And the last ingredient we need for this is some chopped garlic. I believe it called for about three tablespoons. All right, so I'm going to set up my canner and get it ready. So all of my jars are gonna go in the canner. This recipe, actually all the recipes today called for half pint jars. So I'm just setting up the canner with those and then I'll let them come up to temperature for about 10 minutes. The barbecue sauce itself is supposed to come to a full boil and then cook for about 25 minutes. So I have a little bit of time. Now this said that when it was done cooking, it should resemble a thin barbecue sauce. Mine was still a little bit chunky, so I just took out my immersion blender and gave it a quick mix with that. I don't know if that's proper protocol, so do it your own risk, but it definitely wasn't barbecue sauce consistency, which is what the recipe said it should be. All right, well that is finishing up on the stove. I'm just gonna do a quick tidy up over here and get all of the things I need set up to actually get this barbecue sauce jarred. I like to lay out a towel to set my hot jars on so I'm not putting them straight onto my countertop. And also it makes cleanup a little bit easier. So let's get this barbecue sauce canned up. We are going to start by adding the funnel to the jar and then filling it up to the proper headspace. I'm going to make sure there's no bubbles in here and then check the headspace again. And if it's correct, then you just wipe off the top with a vinegar soaked rag to make sure it's not sticky and you get a good seal. And then place the lid right in the center and screw on the band to fingertip tightness. I'm gonna put that back in the canner to wait for the rest of the barbecue sauce. And I'm just gonna repeat this process over and over and over again until we have all of our jars filled. And just a tip, I always fill my canner up with as many jars as I can because you never know if the recipe is gonna make more than what they call for. So it's always better to have extra jars instead of not having enough because then you're gonna to have to quick get jars ready. 
and that's no fun. So we're gonna put the lid back on, let it come up to a full rolling boil, and then process for the proper amount of time. While that is happening, I'm actually gonna get started on my next recipe, and the next recipe is peach salsa, which again is a new recipe for me, and it is so yummy. After we were done with getting all of this stuff processed, we actually made burrito bowls, and my son and I are the only ones who really love salsa in our family, and we went through a whole jar just by ourselves. So I decided this is definitely a winner, and it's going on our permanent rotation for canning. All right, once your processing time is done on those jars that are going in the canner, you just move it to the back of the stove, turn off the heat, and you're supposed to take the lid off. I didn't remember until halfway through, but you let it cool down for about five minutes before you take the jars out of the canner. And I'm just gonna go back to making my salsa while I'm waiting for that to cool off. And this salsa also has a definite kick. It has jalapenos and cayenne pepper in it. So I actually went a little bit under on the amount of cayenne pepper that was supposed to go in. And I'm glad that I did because that was just the right amount of heat for me. Now once these jars have cooled for five minutes in the canner, we're just gonna take them out and again, I like to set something down on the counter so I'm not putting the hot jars straight on my countertop. And I'm just using a drying mat to put them on. You wanna make sure you put them somewhere and on something that you're not going to need for the next 24 hours because you wanna let your jars sit for 24 hours before you disturb them. Isn't that barbecue sauce so pretty? I was so happy with how these turned out. All right, and then I'm reloading the canner right away so that I can have that done. The salsa actually is a really quick recipe. It only needs to cook for about five minutes. So I wanna make sure that these jars are heated up and ready to go when I'm all done with the salsa. Get that salsa onto the stove top, mix it up, and I only have one last ingredient to put in there, and that is fresh cilantro, which is actually from right out of our garden. I love fresh cilantro in salsa. I think it just makes it have such a summery and fresh taste. I love it. All right, so we are going to repeat the process with our salsa filling it to the proper headspace and making sure that there's no air bubbles, checking the headspace again, wiping down the rim of the jar, and then putting on the lid and the jar ring. And once all of the salsa is jarred up, we're just gonna lower that rack back down into the canner. 
put on the lid and again make sure that it comes up to a full rolling boil before you start timing for the proper processing time. And then these jars are all done and they've been cooling for five minutes so we're going to get them out of the canner and put here on the counter with the barbecue sauce. Again, there's nothing prettier than jars that you just canned yourself. There's just something so satisfying about preserving your own food and knowing what kind of ingredients have gone into it and that you've used all quality ingredients. All right, for our last recipe we're gonna to can today, I am going to make, um, it's actually called spreadable fruit, not jam. Um, but I'm going to be using it like peach jam, but it's a spreadable fruit from the ball book and it's the spicy peach spreadable fruit. So this recipe uses no pectin. It uses tart apples instead. And the same place where we got the peaches, they had a bushel bag of tart apples that were seconds for $10, which is a crazy good deal. So I grabbed those right away and we made, I believe four batches of the spreadable fruit by the time the day was over. I only recorded making one batch because it got a little monotonous, um, but I just kept making it over and over and over again. And this has um, very simple ingredients. It's just the tart apples, peaches, lemon juice, lemon zest, nutmeg, and ginger. And it's sweetened with some frozen apple juice concentrate, which we'll put in right at the end. I didn't have any ground nutmeg available. I only had these little nutmeg, I don't know if you call them pods or nuts, but I just had the nutmeg whole, so I used the rasp and ground it myself. And man, does that smell good. This jam has a very fall feel to it. It smelled like fall when I was cooking it, and I think we're really gonna enjoy having this to put on our hot oatmeal when it gets cooler. And I know we're gonna be really thankful to have it and glad we put in all of this extra work. All right, so while that is cooking, this is a long cook recipe. I believe it took almost an hour before it hit the proper stage. I don't remember what the book said it was gonna take. It said it was gonna take a little bit less than that, but it actually took at least an hour to get to the right stage. So we're just gonna clean up and set up. And then when this is fully done cooking, you can check it by using a cold spoon and seeing if it sheets off the spoon as it drips off, or you could test it on the back of a spoon by running your finger through it. Uh, there are lots of different ways to test and see if it's set. This isn't gonna be as set as like a jam is. When it's all ready, we'll just follow all the same procedures as before, filling it to the proper headspace, making sure there's no air bubbles, wiping down the rim of the jar, and so on and so forth. And I didn't mention this before, but with each batch that I'm processing, I wash the lids and the rings fresh and have them sitting there ready to go. All right, we're gonna move this to the back of the stove when it's done, let it cool off for the five minutes. And as you can see, I already have more things going on the stove, which I won't show you because it's all things we've already made. But we filled up this entire countertop with canned peach products and it felt so good to get all of this done today. Uh, we worked, my husband was so sweet and helped me for most of the day. And we worked until I think about 10 o'clock at night with only a break for some dinner. 
And then actually the next day we were back at it and canned more barbecue sauce and more salsa. So my husband Ethan is helping me with this part of the day while I was still working on jam. He was slicing up peaches. We just cut up the peaches fresh and he's laying them out on our trays for our freeze dryer. I know not everyone has a freeze dryer and that's a luxury. So I'm not like saying you need to go out and get a freeze dryer, but we do have one that we worked hard to purchase and we use it a lot to be able to freeze dry and store food that otherwise might go bad. So we have tons of these peaches and we did two rounds in the freeze dryer with these peaches. So eight trays of peaches just so that we can store them and have them for snacks in the future. The kids love to have freeze dried fruits as snacks on road trips and they just are handy to have. So Ethan's gonna get those set up in the freeze dryer and start that. And I believe these took about 24 hours to process in the freeze dryer. I'm not quite sure, I don't remember. Ethan took care of loading them up and then taking them out when they were done. And here they are, completely done out of the freeze dryer. This was the first batch. The second batch is actually just finishing up as I'm recording this. You can see how crispy they get. And we load one tray per Mylar bag and then just drop in an oxygen absorber and seal them up. And the nice thing about these is they will last pretty much forever on the shelf this way, which is wonderful. So we could be preserving these peaches right now and not eating them for like the next five or 10 years and they'll still be perfectly fine. The next morning I made a raisin walnut sourdough loaf, which I kind of just made up on the fly because I thought it sounded good and I figured it would go really well with the peach jam or peach spreadable fruit. It was a little bit dense, but it was really yummy. And it did go really well with this peach jam, which we needed to try, of course. And this jar hadn't been in the refrigerator yet, so it's still a little bit um, soft, but it got a lot more solid as we put it in the refrigerator. Now my little helper is going to help me to take all the rings off of these jars before we store them. We're gonna wipe them down, make sure that they're nice and clean and not sticky, and then label each of them on the top. And this alone was quite the process. She's doing a really good job cleaning up these jars for me. And I will put all of the totals of everything that we processed right here so that you can see for yourself how much we actually got accomplished and how far three bushels of peaches go, which is absolutely insane. I can't believe that we had three bushels of peaches. I actually made some peach puree. I forgot to film it, but I made some extra peach puree and just put them in containers and froze it so that we'd have that for anything we'd need in the future. And it had absolutely nothing in it, just peaches. So that went into the freezer and we have those. My kids ate and ate and ate and ate and ate peaches until they were sick of them. And I still have some peaches left. I'm thinking that after this batch is done in the freeze dryer, we might do another one or two batches of peaches because that's just the easiest and best way to store them for a long time without having to can more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this day or weekend really of processing three bushels of peaches. It's crazy how far they went, and I hope you got some ideas and recipes that you might be trying out in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.